my fears relieve. How precious did that grace appear. The hour I first believed on the third through me. song. Good singing this morning. Uh, thank you for that. Good morning. It's good to see everybody here. Uh, I'm going to mention two or three things right quick. We're going to uh, have a word of prayer, make some announcements, and move right into the uh, service. Since we're having two services today, uh, this first one will have to be a little shorter as we'll be dismissed. Uh, we had folks volunteer last week to come to the second service, which will be at 11 o'clock. And um, you wouldn't believe the people have asked me, are you going to preach the same sermon? And uh, my answer is no, no. Uh, it, I'll, be, I'll repeat some stuff, and, but it's, it's, uh, uh, it's not different, different thought. Uh, now, usually in like big churches, that have two or three. They do preach. Preacher does that. But since we have 10 times more people uh, online listening, uh, we'll have, I'll have something different. I'll, we'll repeat a few little things. Now I want to pray for the, pray for those that are sick. We have a lot of folks, Miss Dot still sick. Uh, others that are having sickness and problems and burdens, not related to the, the, the virus or anything, just regular, you know, folks still get regular sick too. And uh, so, uh, let's remember them in prayer this morning. And of course, our, our nation, this world, um, uh, we have never, ever seen anything like this at all, and it probably may be going to get way worse before it gets better. But the good news is God's on the throne. <clears throat> he, he uh not taken by surprise. The worldwide cases have now doubled this week to 312,000 as of last night, uh, 13,000 deaths, which that's, that's encouraging to know that most people recover um, uh, and in the United States, 27,000, that's up 10% more than was this time last week and, uh, 354 dead. Um, so we're, we're living in a, a very, very unique time. And, uh, if there's ever been a time when people need to turn to the Lord, it's now I'll be talking about that in a little bit, but we're going to go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Thank you for being here. We're going to have a good crowd time. All the rest of them get in here. Uh, people's normally late anyway. Is going to miss a lot. Uh, but uh, we'll have a lot of folks coming in for the next service. And uh, this will be our schedule until further notice. Uh, one service at 10, one service at 11, uh, regular service tonight at 6. Uh, nobody shakes hands. We don't even have songbooks out. So you don't have to touch a thing. You're, you are a lot more contaminated going in a store than you are coming in here. Way more. Uh, uh, post office or anywhere. So no, everything's in here has been bleached, the floor cleaned, um, everything. It's going to be done again at uh, about five minutes till 10. This morning, if you've got something or somebody on your heart you'd like for us to pour, thank you. Lord knows what that is. Let's just all stand and do that right now, okay? Our Heavenly Father, we sure do thank you for the opportunity of coming to church this morning. Thank you the doors are open. Thank you for the privilege of coming to you and coming to your house today. I pray for all those that are sick, not able to be here. I pray for those that are watching uh, 
around the world this morning, Lord, to our services that don't have anywhere to go to church. I pray that you'd bless them and help them. Have your way in our hearts this morning. Lord, I pray for our country, for our leaders, for the world. I pray for revival. I pray for uh, God, for churches everywhere, and preachers and pastors and missionaries and evangelists. Oh, Lord, have your way in our hearts this morning. Do what needs to be done. Bless the special singing we're going to have here in a little while. And all the things that said are done, we'll give you the glory for it. Now, Lord, do what ought to be done here today. Anoint thy word here this morning, thy servant, uh, to preach. I pray that you'd bless every single thing that's said or done here today. And whatever you do, we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen. All right, just remain standing. Turn around there and just say hey to everybody just for about 20 seconds. Everybody just turn around there and say hey to everybody else. <laughs> little fellowship there. Amen. I see people waving at each other. That's good. Just remain standing. The usher is going to come this morning, and let's everybody get ready to give and honor the Lord today. Um, uh, I mentioned a couple things right quick while they're doing that by ways of announcements. Um, I've had uh, several people ask how how to be able to give uh, when they're not here. We have folks that are uh, at home and uh, want to give and don't have a way to give. So as of now, uh, you can mail it to Post Office Box 177, and it's easy to remember, 177-NEBO-28761. Uh, now I'll say that again now in just a minute while I get you something to write with. Uh, mail it to uh, Post Office Box 177-NEBO, NEBO, North Carolina, uh, 28761. Two eight seven six one. Maybe we, if it goes on, we'll get a uh, a way that you could give electronically or whatever. But we do appreciate all y'all that are watching uh, by our live stream today. We want to make you welcome. You may be in a place where you're completely confined and can't can't get out. And and the Lord bless you. And and if you're uh, just feel like you should stay at home, what that's totally fine. You will not be. You will not be judged or criticized. That don't make you any less right with God or anything like that. But we just want everybody to be uh, get their soul fed and get it out as much as they can. I'm going to talk about ways to do that in a little bit. So let's all give this morning and honor the Lord. Uh, you know, everybody's going to feel this financial pinch. Uh, we, we still have our bills to pay. We still got the light bill. We are missionaries. Uh, you know, they're on the foreign field. Uh, we want to try to keep sending them their money. Uh, keep everything going, our insurance. Uh, so so it's, it's important that we still honor God and do our part. You give the Lord his part and you'll never go wrong for that, okay? All right, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we sure do thank you for the privilege of giving. We're glad we've got something to give. I pray that for all the people in the world that don't and those that want to but don't have anything, I pray that you bless everybody here, those that may be struggling in some way, shape, or form. Do what ought to be done. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. stand one more time this morning, sing a couple of verses of victory in Jesus. Amen. Amen. Everyone knows that. And uh, you can have the victory this morning. Bye. Amen. Bye. And we have the victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's all stand and sing this gold song, Victory in Jesus. <laughs> Savior came. 
came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groanings, of his precious blood's atoning, and I repented of my sins and won the special singing here teardrop trios coming to sing here in, in a little bit uh, uh in, at, in the next service and many of you will be planning on staying i think you'll probably be okay we'll be uh well within limits hopefully um and uh we're going to just have a time now listen listen the lord is still on his throne nothing will ever change that god knows the end from the beginning they they um, they say last night that the the government is they're now saying going to have to bail out the country to the tune of two trillion with a T dollars. You know how much money that is? I'll just take this. Fine. You know how much money that is? The entire budget of the entire United States for a year is five trillion. That's almost half the entire budget. In two weeks. So we could be, could be headed for some really, really rough time. We hope not. Uh, we want to hope for the best, pray for the best. We could be, ladies and gentlemen, seeing some days like this country's never seen since 1929. Let's hope and pray not. Now, uh, I'm not a prophet of gloom. I'm looking on the bright side, and I'm going to preach about positive stuff today. Last Sunday, I preached a lot of negative stuff. Today, it's going to be positive uh, in both services, if you want to look at it that way, the good side of it. Now, uh, I don't know uh, if you want to if, take your Bible. Let's, let's start this. Let's take your Bible and turn to Genesis 41, and I'm going to read some scripture here. Genesis 41 is uh, during the time... When um, Joseph, the story of Joseph, and Joseph had been sold into slavery. He was now uh, over there in Egypt when the famine came, seven years of good time, and then the seven years of bad time. Um, we have definitely had some good times in this country the last few years as far as prosperity, food, money, stuff like that. That's, I'm talking material things. Uh, and then there came a dearth, a famine, where there wasn't nothing to eat. You couldn't get nothing to eat. And look here what Joseph, what they told his brothers to, uh, that did here. Look at verse 53. Genesis, Genesis 41, verse 53. 
Uh, I'm going to preach this morning on the subject of uh, panic in a pandemic. Panic in a pandemic. And we are not to panic. Look at verse 53. And the seven years of plenteousness that was in the land of Egypt were ended. Good days were gone. And the seven years of dearth, when there wasn't no crops, wasn't no food, seven years began to come according as Joseph had said. And the dearth was in all lands, but in all the land of Egypt there was bread. Now stop there just a second. You want to remember when reading Genesis that Joseph was the greatest, if not one of the greatest, if not the greatest type of the Lord Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. When I say type, I'm talking about people in the Bible in the Old Testament. Many of them were pictures of Jesus Christ. He was hated by his brethren. He was one of the 12 tribes. They all hated him. They all envied him. They were jealous of him. That's the same thing they did Jesus. They sold him into slavery, put him in the pit, picture of the death of Jesus. But God was with him. Brought him out, resurrection, went to the far country, exalted to the right hand of the king, a picture of the reign of Christ in heaven now. Joseph, they say, was over 152 places that Joseph is a picture of Christ. So it said there, there was, uh, uh, there was, there was all this stuff happened, verse 54, according as Joseph had said. Joseph being a type of Christ, prophesied this was going to happen. Now, look at this. And when all the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried to Pharaoh. He was the government. Uh, for bread, get, we got to have something to eat. And Pharaoh had enough sense, said unto all the Egyptians, go unto Joseph what he saith to you, do. Hold it right there. Now, if you read your Bible, that'll put a shout in your soul. Joseph, the man that wrote Genesis didn't know that John chapter 2 would be written one day. And, and Mary, uh, uh, Jesus came there to the well and, the, and they came there needing what, uh, they didn't have no, uh, and you know what Mary said? Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. He's the man. That's the man you want to listen to, the Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever he says, do it. Pharaoh said that same thing. That's prophecy. What he saith, do it. Now, anytime things are good, anytime things are bad, you know what your best advice is? Whatever he says, do it. Whatever he says, do it. You know the way out of this mess we're in this country this morning? Do what he says. That's the way out, y'all. That's it. Plain and simple. You say, well, you're making it oversimplified. Nope. If this country get down on our knees and say, whatever you say, Lord, we'll do, buddy, he'd get us out of this mess in a hurry. But look at here. What happened? Verse 56, and the famine was over all the face of the earth. And Joseph, picture of the Lord, opened all the storehouses and sold unto Egypt, the Egyptians. And the famine waxed sore in the land of Egypt. And all countries came into Egypt to Joseph to buy, for to buy corn because the famine was so sore in all lands. Now, there was a great shortage of food, tremendous shortage of you, you, uh, the grocery stores were empty, as uh, we're, we have seen a little bit of in the last few days. Uh, the restaurants uh, didn't have anything. The, the storehouses were empty. The barns were empty. And there was a shortage on this and a shortage on milk and a shortage on bread and a shortage on uh, meat and a shortage on stuff that uh, people had to have have supplies. So this morning, I'm going to tell you about how not to panic during a time like this. And I got uh, four little thoughts that I want to give you this morning, and I hope the Lord uses it too. Number one, number one, there was not then, nor is there now, a shortage of the power of God. There is no shortage on spiritual power. The Lord has plenty of it. He said, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. 
Uh, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return to the Lord and he'll have mercy upon him and our God for he will abundantly pardon. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no shortage of God's power. Ain't, ain't you glad this morning that you, you when you kneel down to pray, uh, you don't have to say, Lord, you're going to have to give me strength. But And the Lord says, sorry, uh, I'm having to put so much strength over here and so much strength over there, so much strength over here, so much strength over there. I don't have enough for you right now. Come back in a week. Ain't you glad this morning that every child of God in the world this morning can kneel at our feet and immediately God has. My pastor used to say this. He said there's power to match the hour. There's grace uh, uh, to, and, and joy for the journey. Grace to meet every need that a child of God has. There is no shortage of God's power. You know, back, um, I'll say more about this this morning, or maybe this evening. Uh, back a few weeks ago, February the 19th, the Dow, if you understand that, had the highest day ever in history. Uh, uh, got up over 30 or whatever it gets, and they said, uh, good times are here to stay. Uh, that had never been that high only three or four weeks ago from right now. You know how much the Dow has lost the last few days? $12 trillion. Uh, now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell you something right now. Uh, people, you know, when the stock market crashed in 1929, uh, there was businessmen all over New York, and their whole life was 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 tangled up in the stocks and the trade and the market and and in banks and their wealth and their purchases and their building. And they said when that thing crashed, they was lined up on top of them buildings in New York waiting to jump off and commit suicide. Now, uh, there's nothing wrong with owning stocks and bonds. If you got money and all that, that's wonderful. But I'm telling you something right now. And all you people listening everywhere, anywhere in this world, you better have your faith where it needs to be. You better not put your faith in, in gold. You better put your faith in God. Listen, that's only the Lord has the power uh, to, do, uh, to get done what needs to be done. You know, somebody said this the other day. I heard somebody said, uh, they said, you know what the difference between a gangster and a bankster is? A bankster can rob you legally. Uh, uh, they, uh, but I, that's about the only difference sometimes. But that time, it may come to that. It may come when money fails. It may come uh, when money fails. But God Almighty, my Heavenly Father, that wakes me up every day, my heavenly father that puts food on my table and clothes on my back. My heavenly father that's took care of me since I was 18 years old, all my life, even before then. My heavenly father has enough power to get us through whatever battles and trials we may face. And if we go down, we'll go down shouting, saying, God's will be done. Amen. Woo! Hallelujah. Amen. Lord have mercy. There's no shortage on God's power. There's no shortage on God's power. You say, well, Brother Danny, I ain't going to have enough money to go on vacation. Yeah, but you can get down and get the glory in your soul. Uh, you, you still got a Bible. You still got a I, I, I can feel something fluttering around in my heart right now. I, I'm glad we've got hope this morning. The world don't have no hope. Thank God we've got hope, people. Hallelujah, we've got hope. Amen. This thing is it's true. And, and it rings true now. It seems like more than ever before. Number two. Number two, there is no shortage of forgiveness. There is no shortage of forgiveness. I'm thankful this morning. Many, many millions, millions of people need forgiveness. And maybe you're here this morning and you need forgiveness. Uh, you, might, uh, you might go to the store and look and, and the bread ain't there. You might go to the store and look and the milk ain't there. You might go, oh man, I really needed this. The baby needs milk or the baby needs diapers. Uh, but oh, hallelujah. You will not kneel down and say, Lord, Lord, I need forgiveness. I'm dirty. I've sinned. God, I need forgiveness. Yet that you will not happen. And a message come back from heaven saying, the shelves are all cleaned out. I've had to put all that forgiveness on millions of other people in the world that's trying to get right. No, no, no. He got enough for everybody. You ever thought about this? The Lord's got enough uh, forgiveness in the bank to pay for every sin in the whole wide world. Jesus didn't just die for certain people. That, uh, that, uh, 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 not, that 
discretionary election <laughs> where only he only died for a few. That is not true. Limited atonement's a lie of the devil. He died for everybody. He paid for every sin anybody ever had committed or ever would commit. He died for them all. There's enough forgiveness. There's enough forgiveness. Have you ever have you ever um, heard that? Um, I've seen that little bumper sticker that says, Christians aren't perfect, just forgiven. That's the truth. That's the truth. Brother, I'm not perfect, but I am forgiven. I'm not, I'm not a, a, a perfect person, but I have a perfect Savior, and the blood of Jesus is still perfect. And, you, you know, you can feel guilty. I, I met people yesterday. I went, we went visiting yesterday and had, a, had some really good, it's the best time you've ever seen in your life to go visit. Now, you say, Brother Danny, surely the Lord, you, listen, you can go to somebody's house, knock on the door, stand this far away, and have them a track and tell them about Jesus. And if you don't, it, you do the post office as well nastier than that. Uh, so uh, yes, and we knocked on doors and I talked to people and um, uh, people come to the door and not one person refused to track. Not one person said, I, I don't want to hear that. And I'll tell you about one of them here maybe in a little bit. Uh, I, I, not one person said, I don't want to hear that. Everybody, everybody. I had that, that uh, CD in my pocket, the grocery store last night. And uh, uh, the, the lady was checking uh, um, stuff out. We went to the store and uh, before I left, I said, here, you want to find out what the Bible says about the pandemic? And she said, yes. I give her a CD. Everybody, they want to know. I said, here, take this and listen to it. Listen, no, listen, there's millions of people this morning. There are millions of people this morning that are saying, well, I need God. I need God. But I've done too much wrong. I'm, I'm not seeing too much. I'm living like a devil. I wouldn't get right when times was good, and now I feel too bad to get right when times are bad. Let me let me give you some good advice. There's room at the cross for you. There's room at the cross for you. Though millions have come, there's still room for one. Yes, there's room at the cross for you. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm glad, buddy. There's room at the cross. He said, uh, uh, um, uh, this one man, he felt really, really guilty. And uh, he was trying to get right with the Lord. He felt extreme guilt. He said, I've done so much wrong. He said, preacher, I, uh, I, I think Moody or one of them preachers talking to him about it. He said, I've done so much wrong. He said, I just don't think God forgive me. He said, I just don't think, I just don't feel like I can be forgiven. I've, I've, I just wouldn't believe what I've done wrong. And, and Dale Moody said, uh, he told him that illustration. He said, uh, did you know God has removed our sins as far as the east is from the west. And that stuck in that guy's head. You know, the, uh, people say them old people, ignorant people wrote the Bible, them old, old uh, prehistoric nuts uh, that <laughs> didn't know what they was talking about. You know what he put in there? This sins as far as the east is from the west. That's pretty good knowledge for back then, wasn't it? Did you know that wouldn't work if he said north to south? If he said north to south, we're in trouble. Because if you go, look here, if, you, if, you're, if you're on top of the world, the North Pole, and you start going south, you go south, 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 till you get to the bottom, and you keep going, you start going north again. You sure do. You, you start going north, south, north, south. And, and you know how far it is from the... North to the south? <laughs> I don't know. Remember how many thousand? I don't I, that's, that's Somebody knows that right quick. Um, 18,000 miles around or nine or something? Is that close? I'm guessing. No, it's more than nine. Way more than that. Got to be. No, it's more than four. Oh, 24,000. Something like 12, something like that. That may be close. But anyway, so, anyway, you get there. You start north, you can get south. You start south, you can get north. But guess what? If you get right here and start east, you ain't never going west. You can go east, 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 and forever, never, never, never get west. Isn't that something? Isn't that amazing how the Holy Spirit led the, the prophet to put that, he had moved our sins as far as, the east. you know how far it is from east to west? Forever, never, 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 never. You never get west, you keep going east. If you keep going north, you'll get south. You keep going south, you'll get north. But if you go keep going east, you'll never get west. I'm telling you, that's forgiveness. 
That's forgiveness. Our sins are washed away in the blood of the Lamb. You say, Brother Danny, I broke my promises and I've been right with God. I know there's people in other parts of the country listening to me right now. You say, well, Brother Danny, I promised God I'd never do this and I did it and I rededicated my life and then I backslid. And, and Brother Danny, I, I promised him I'd never go there and I did. I promised him I'd never drink and I did. I promised him I'd never cuss and I did. I promised him I'd never smoke pot and then I did. I promised him I'd never uh, cheat and then I did. Brother Danny, well, I'm telling you, it's awful that you sin, but I'm glad to tell you this morning there's enough forgiveness. The blood of Jesus has never lost its power. There's power, there's power in the blood of the Lamb, and you can be forgiven today. I wouldn't live another week in this mess unless I knew I was forgiven. You forgiven? Number three, let me say thirdly this morning, there's no shortage on the abundant life. Say amen right there, Frank. Frank, he he's got a new word he's been saying. Okay. So uh, we're going to say that right now. We're going to be, we're saved and ready to meet the Lord. Ain't that right, Frank? Okay. <laughs> Everybody, that's shouting ground. A spanky learned, taught us that. But I'm telling you, we had, uh, there's no shortage on abundant life. There's no shortage on abundant life. The Lord said this. He said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. So he didn't just come that you could be saved and have eternal life. He wants you to have an abundant life. The joy, the blessings, the power, the, the everyday life. Listen, people, this ain't no time for us as God's children to be defeated. This ain't no time for us to hang our head. I know Christian people. They're saying, oh my God, I don't know what we're going to do. I'm scared to death. I'm just going to stay in the house, close the doors, and, 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 and wrap my head up and, and take medicine or something. Uh, listen, that ain't no way for a child of God to react in a time like this. Lord, have mercy, people. The future's bright for a child of God. We don't know what's going to happen down here in this world. We hope things will work out. We hope the economy will bounce back. We hope the virus dies out. And we hope they'll get a vaccine. We hope and praise God if they do. We'll, we'll thank God for it. And, but if it, if it don't, if it don't, this is no time for a Christian. You know, there's I've I seen them carrying that, that liquor or that uh, wine and beer out of Walmart yesterday. When I was over here uh, uh, getting some stuff. Uh, I had to hurry. I got me a sandwich over there. I didn't have nothing to eat. Got a sandwich over there. I was going to the funeral down here yesterday for Miss Sherry's mother. And I was in there and this, carrying that wine out, carrying that beer out. And uh, I thought, you know what a lot of people's going to do? They're going to go on about a two-month drunk, and the government's going to pay for it. And that's their answer to a problem like that. And then they'll uh, uh, sober back up. Uh, that's a sad way to have to live in a crisis. We don't listen, people. Our, our roots ain't down here in this world no how. I've been telling you for years and years and years. I don't want to see, I don't. I can't stand people say, I told you so. So I, don't, I ain't doing that. I'm not doing that. But I've been telling you for years and years and years. We may live to see the day when we can't even come in here. We may live, we, I said, we better run them buses while we can because the day may come we can't. You, how many have heard me say that? Over and over and over. Well, it's here. That day has come. I'm telling you, God, the same God that brought us through good times is the same God that shines brighter in the hard times. I like that little fellow at school the other day. Uh, they tell me about, and he had some hand sanitizer, and he's selling it for a dollar a squirt. Perhaps smart little guy there. Uh, he got in trouble for it, but my goodness, man, that's, I would hire him if I run a business. Wouldn't you? Yes, sir. Uh, I, ain't, I don't see anything wrong with that. People willing to pay it, but I don't think you should price gouge and stuff like that, but you know what I mean. That's a pretty smart little guy. He's an entrepreneur. That, that fella will go somewhere. Uh, you mark it down. So uh, we're putting out CDs, putting out tracks. Uh, we know there's a better day of coming. We know there's a better day of coming. We know there's a better day of coming. I, I talked to a guy yesterday and sort of a strange guy. He, he came to the door. I gave him a track, you know, and I, he said, uh, where you go church? And I told him, and he said, what do you think about this coronavirus? And I told him what I think. And I said, that's my opinion. I could be wrong. Uh, those things. I, I, I think a lot of stuff. And, uh, I, I said, uh, I feel like this and I feel like the Lord then and I feel like the answer. And I said, I told him, I felt like we're headed to a one world government, one world monetary system. Maybe not this year, next year, 10 years, but eventually that's where it's going. And uh, he said, do you believe all that? And I said, I sure do. 
I said, there's going to a man going to run the world. You're going to have a mark on your hand and forehead. He said, you take that literal? He was a young guy. Thought he was, and I said, I sure do. He said, I don't believe in double pro prophecies. He said, I don't believe in double prophecy fulfillment. What he meant was he's putting all that prophecy in the past at the destruction of Jerusalem and stuff like that. There's a lot of nuts that believe that. And he said, how do you know that didn't happen in the past? I said, because the sun didn't go out and the moon didn't turn to blood and there ain't no man making a mark on you. That's how I know that wasn't in the past. That's in the future. And he said, uh, he said uh, you take that literal? I said, I sure do. I have no reason not to. Uh, if, the Bible, if the Bible says something, we take it literal. If it's symbolic, it will tell you. It speaks symbolically. Or in general. It's always careful to let you know. When it's a parable, it'll tell you a parable. But even a parable illustrates certain truths, which is literally true. And so uh, we, had, we had a little talk there, and finally he, he got aggravated. And he said, don't come back. I said, okay. I shouldn't have said that. I felt bad about saying that. I said, I'll be back next Saturday, buddy. Uh, and I'm going to bring you some uh, books to read or tape to listen to, CD to uh, what, DVD or something like that. Listen, you can still enjoy life. You can still have the abundant life. You say, well, Brother Danny, what if we all get sick? That may happen. I may get that virus or something worse. You may get it or something worse. I tell you one thing, you ain't going to stay healthy forever. If they, cure, if they cured it today, something else is going to get you. Right? I mean, that day's going to come when you're going to be laying on the bed so sick you can't think and feel so bad you can't even hold a conversation. And then when that day comes, have your faith in the right place. Have your feet planted on the ground. Let your conscience be clear. And you can still be right with God and have abundant life even then. I think about old Bo. Sit right there where Miss Donna is sitting there this morning. Right back there. Roger and all of them were sitting right in there this morning. I, I thought about Bo, bless his heart, 37 years old. I think it was 36 or 7. Healthy, man, when he first come here, that boy was healthy as a bear. I mean, big old strong. He said, he said, I've heard about you for years, Danny. He said, I won't start coming to hear you. Church. I said, come on, man, you're welcome. And he started coming, hadn't been here but no time, and he had a pain in his leg. And he uh, started hurting his leg real bad. Finally went and had it checked out. It was cancer, a tumor. And Bo, hey, uh, he had that, I think, had some surgery and took some treatments. And, and we all prayed, and everybody thought, well, he'll probably be all right. He's 37 years old. He's healthy. And sure enough, another one came. Another one came. Another one came. They prayed for him. Everybody in the country is praying for him. And uh, uh, he, he got worse and worse and worse. Finally, it became evident that they were getting all up in around in here and his back and everything else, his head. And finally it became evident unless God performed a miracle, he was not gonna, gonna, gonna make it. How many of y'all remember uh, Bo? Okay, sorry, bit, uh, most of you. Uh, and uh, this has been maybe five years ago, something like that. And anyway, uh, Bo, he got sick in the hospital. I went and prayed with him in the hospital. He'd stand right there. We're, we're, they're sitting right in this section. And he'd stand up and say, he said, uh, I'm a winner either way, if I go or if I stay. He said, if the Lord wants to take me on, that's fine. If he wants to leave me here, I'll witness. And I thought, man, that guy's got more victory than some people out here in perfect health and miserable and fussing and fighting and defeated and, 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 and upset and mad all the time. And, and, and I, I, was, I marveled at him. I, I marveled. I, I, got, I can usually keep pretty good spirits when I'm sick. I'd never seen nobody. I'd never seen nobody handle it uh, like them. And then finally, that, those last few days of his life, we went down there and sang in the rest home. Or, or the hospice, I reckon that's what they called it, where he was, and brother old Bo, he could barely speak. I went in one day, and I, 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 he's writing down. I said, what are you doing, Bo? He said, I'm writing down stuff I want you to say at my funeral. I said, okay, buddy. I, I, I was amazed. I was more wore, tore up than he was, and, and I wasn't even sick. And, and you know what that is? That's dying grace. One man said, I ain't got no dying grace. Priest said, Go, you ain't dying. Listen, brother, if you'll live right and serve God, when that time comes, dying grace is going to show up. Brother Bobby, that's Brother uh, Don Thomas's associate pastor. I think he may have been here. I'm not sure. Brother Bobby got sick, healthy young man, associate pastor. He's about 30, 37, 8 years old, and uh, he got sick. Same thing. Got worse and worse and worse, and he preached, I think, the Sunday 
before he died. Same way. Every time I go up there, he get littler and skinnier and awful uh, looking. His flesh, you could just tell the man was dying. And he got up and preached and he said the same thing. If I go or if I stay, I'm a winner either way. The Lord got, listen, live your life like that. Now, I'm not saying don't, don't work hard, make a living, pay your bills, take care of your family, but live your own personal life and keep your heart in a place so that if, if we all get sick, if we all uh, get something that's going to take us out of here, we can say, listen, I, I've, I've, I'm standing on his promises. I'm, I've still got eternal life. I'm going to make the best out of this. By the grace of God, I'm going to say like Paul, I, I am what I am. I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I've kept the faith. People ask me all week long, what are you going to do, preacher? What are you going to do? I said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to do by the grace of God what I've always done. If, if, if they don't pass, pass a law against it, I'm going to be in here preaching if I'm able. If I'm not, I'm not. But if I'm able, I'll be here preaching the Word of God and we're going to do the best we can and serve the Lord. What we believed all these years is not wrong. It's not wrong. And it will carry us through whatever we wind up having to go through. Good or bad, if it turns out great, we'll shout. And if it don't, we'll shout over yonder on the other side. Let me say this, and I'm through right quickly this morning. We'll, we'll dismiss for the other crowd to come in. I said, number one, there's no shortage of power. Don't panic in a pandemic. I said, there's no shortage of forgiveness. The Lord's got plenty of it in a pandemic. I said, number three, there's no Shortage of abundant life. Finally, in closing this morning, there is no shortage of reservations in heaven. You can still get in. There's still room. The Lord said, I go to prepare a place for you. There's enough room for everybody that wants to get in. They're saying now that there may not be enough room for in hospitals for everybody that needs to be in them to get in. When you go, up until now, when you go to reserve a flight to fly somewhere in the, in the country, you have to reserve that flight. Sometimes I've called before and they'll say, sorry, the flight is booked. And it's even overbooked. They overbook them because they figure two or three will cancel. And, and, and that's the way they do. They want to make sure every seat's full and get their money. And they say, sorry, that flight is full. No more seats available on that flight. No, you can't get on. You cannot get on. I've, I've, I've had people tell me, they said, Brother Danny, I'm trying to get me a place to live. But I went down here to where these apartments are. They're all full. They ain't accepting no new people. No, I put in an application. They said, sorry, you're on the waiting list. Let me tell you something, people. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There is no shortage of reservations and mansions and a place prepared for you in heaven. Amen. There's room at the cross. Though millions have come, there's still room for one. Yes, there's room at the cross for you. There's a place for you. The blood of Jesus is still there, and he will open the door and let you in, and you can be saved by the grace of God. I read a story about a man by the name of John Vassat. He was saved and went into ministry in 1850. This man was raised in New York in a brewery, home of a brewery. They, they made alcoholic beverages for, for a living. His family was in the brewing business. His dad, his family, that's all they did for a living was make liquor, vodka, gin, whiskey, and all whatever you make uh, in, in, in a brewery. But that boy got saved. And when he got saved, he said, Lord, I'm going to give everything I've got to you. I'm going to give everything I've got to you. Uh, he, he said, uh, I'm going to give it all to you. So he was sent out by the American Track Society and headed west. And he took tracks like this. And he headed out west. Right, now think about, think about that. There's a guy, his daddy made liquor for a living, buddy. I mean, there's bootleggers, legal bootleggers. That's what that is. And uh, they... And he got saved. 
So the Lord led him in there. He got tracks and started going out west toward, toward California. And he started giving out tracks to everybody he'd meet, everybody he'd come in contact with. He'd ask them about their relationship with the Lord. He'd ask them about their relationship with God. He would ask them about if they're saved. And God used him. Think about that. Now, so it don't matter how you was raised. Don't matter how you was raised. The Lord's got room for you. He's got a space for you in heaven. And then you know what? He ran into a little widow woman out west. In 1850, there wasn't Bibles everywhere. There wasn't internet. There wasn't TV. And that woman said, I'd give anything in the world if I had my own Bible. If I just had my own real Bible. And he got her one. He got her a Bible and took it to her. She said that was her most precious possession. Her husband was a wicked man. Evil, ungodly, wicked old reprobate. And, and, and she came in and showed him that Bible, he jerked it out of her hands. He said, you know that's a blankety blank bunch of junk. He said, we're not having that in this house. He took it out to his shed and laid it down like this and took an ax and chopped that Bible in two right there, completely in two pieces. Where if you opened it up, you just have half the word here, here uh, the verses here, the other half down there. He took that half, he went back in the house, and handed it to his wife. And he said, here, we're, we're supposed to be half owners and everything since we're married. Here's your half. And he took the other half and threw it out in his shed. And time went by. And time went by. And that dear lady read half of pages and prayed. And read half of pages and prayed. And one day, after some not a lot of time had gone by, that old boy was out in his shed working. And they said that that who that young man who grew up in a in a liquor making home had told her about the Lord. She told her husband about the Lord. He was out there in the in the shed, and it was a cold, rainy day, and he didn't have anything to do. And he picked that thing up, and he picked that thing up and opened it. It was the first part of Luke chapter fifteen, the story of the prodigal son. And he said a certain man had two sons. And uh, the younger of them said, Father, uh, give me the portion that's due me. I'm, and he took his journey, went to a far country and everything. And he got intrigued by that story. And he read it again. He said, I know this stuff like this in the Bible. It makes sense. And he's reading it and reading it and reading it again. And he finally got his curiosity up. He said, I got to know what happened. So he goes in the house and says, where's that other half of that book? She got it, and he got it and read the rest of that story. How did he come home to his father, and his father put, put a, a robe on him and, and killed a fatty calf and, and had a feast, and they, had, and they eat, drink, and be merry, and everybody had a hallelujah time, and all was forgiven. And you guessed it. You guessed it. You done got ahead of me. Listen, the Lord got a hold of him. He got down on his knees, got saved by the grace of God. And brother, that old boy is 1850, so he's in heaven right now. because you, you say, brother Danny, a man would take an ax and chop the Bible? They're... they're God's got a, uh, enough reservation. Yep, yep, got a place for him. Got a place for him. I don't care if you burned it. I don't care if you cussed it. I don't care if you threw it across the floor. I don't care if you're a drug dealer listening to me today. I don't care if you're, a, you're an atheist. There's room at the cross for you. There's reservation in heaven. How many times have you heard me say, remember me getting up here and saying, you better do it while you can because time comes when you can't. Okay, I'm going to say something else. You better get saved while you can because the time may come when you either done too late and you're dead or you may not even be in your right mind and be so full of medicine you can't call on God. There's reservation for you. Don't be like them fools in the tribulation that their heart gets so hard that they cuss God while he's pouring out his wrath. Get saved today. Let's stand by our heads for prayer, please. They're coming to get us a song. Every head bowed, every eyes closed. Every head bowed, every eyes closed. I'm going to ask you to bow your head and close your eyes. You that are watching online, bow your head, close your eyes. And the you that will see this in the next few days, there's been over 3,000 people watch that service from last Sunday morning. 
People are hungry. People are searching. People are wanting answers. There's room at the cross for you. If you're here this morning and you are not saved, you can get saved today right here in this service. You do that. We're going to pray. And we're going to have an invitation for you that are watching on the internet. You bow your head right now. And I'm going to tell you exactly what you've got to do to be saved. You can do it right here in this church today. Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, that you touch every single heart. Those that are here and those that are listening by way of the airwaves, they'll hear this on CD, DVD, or whatever. I pray right now that you'd reach out there and touch hearts. You're not, there's no shortage of your power. There's no shortage of your forgiveness. There's no shortage of your reservations and abundant life. I pray that you'd help somebody to make that step they need to make right now in Jesus' name and for his sake. Our heads are still bowed and eyes are closed. If you're here this morning, you're not saved. You come this morning, get your heart right with God. Get your life right with God. Amen. Amen. You come right now. Let's all stand and sing now. Was shed for me and that. Sing it. You need to come? You need to come, young man? You come on right now. You come on. You don't have to go to hell. You can come and get saved, young lady, mom and dad. Put your heart right. Right now. You can bow your head and be saved. Just as I am and waiting not to rid my soul of one dark blood to thee whose blood can cleanse each spot, O Lamb of God, I come. We'll stop right there. If you're not saved, get saved today. Thank the Lord for this come to the altar. But, um, now listen, we're going to stop right here. Um, I, you may, if, if whoever wants to, may be able to stay. We're not over the limit. We can, you can stay for the second service. I think we'll be all right. Uh, we got a good crowd in here now, I'll tell you that. Uh, for Sunday morning, pray, I mean, for a Sunday school crowd, this will be our schedule for the next ever how long until you hear different. So uh, pray, um, let's pray for those that are home. We have folks that are elderly and folks that are, that are um, have, you know, have other problems. And we have folks that just felt like, hey, I just can't, can't do it. Well, y'all that are at home, make sure you sing with us. Make sure you're all together. Make sure you sing all the songs. Holler amen. And uh, don't eat cereal just like, you, just like you was here. Okay? All right. Amen. Isn't that right? So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll break for about eight or nine minutes and start the second service. Uh, God bless you. You're at liberty to go. Go ahead. That rock where he leads me I'm so overwhelmed The place where he hides me Under his just a song, but he's the reason I sing. Oh, I have
lost, save no in Christ. Oh, God said he is precious. <laughs> Good morning, good morning, good morning. Let's all stand this morning. We don't have songbooks trying to be healthy and uh, not spread anything. So we're going to sing Amazing Grace this morning. Amen. And I tell you, the first service was a great service, and we're glad you're here. So let's sing about God's amazing grace this morning. Amen. Everyone stand up, sing out. Sing something everyone knows. Think about the words when you sing them. Amen. Think about what God's done for you. How good he's been. On the first now. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind. Grace had taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. Amen. On the third now, sing out good loud. Through many dangers, tolls, and snares, I have already come. His grace hath brought me safe thus far. And grace will lead me home. We'll sing this last one now. Boy, it'll be good when we get to heaven, won't it? Amen. On the last. When we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun, we've no to see God's praise and when we first begun all God's people said amen all right you can be seated good morning uh sure is a blessing to see you here in the services today um uh we are uh we, we went really, really smooth in the first service. We welcome you to the second service this morning. Um, we will be having church tonight at 6 o'clock for everybody. So you be sure and be here. Don't miss it. I've got something real special on my heart. Um, we want to be praying 
of a lot of people. We pray for this, those that are sick. Let's pray for uh, churches everywhere. Uh, a lot, most of the little little country churches out, thousands of them like that, don't affect them much one way or the other. I uh, went to the funeral down here yesterday, and it was just like normal church. Um, but there's big churches, and in big cities, California and New York, uh, has really been hit hard right now. So I remember them in prayer. And I'll tell you what's going to happen. And I base this on 42 years of experience of seeing people having to miss church. Uh, if a church has 100 people in it and everybody stays home for two months, when they start back up, they'll have 70. And I base that on experience because some people that are on the edge just fall out. And uh, thank the Lord, they can watch online, but m most won't. Uh, if you are watching online today, let everybody sit still, sing with us when we sing, uh, give when we give, uh, pray when we pray, just like you at regular church. Do not let yourself get out of the habit of being in church, fellowship, singing, preaching. As a matter of fact, during this time when you got more time, listen to a bunch of preaching. And I'll, I'll say more about that in a little bit. I preached on... Don't panic in a pandemic a while ago. And uh, it's a, a positive message in these dark days. And I got another one here coming up here in just a minute. And I'm going to be preaching on prospering in a pandemic here in just a few minutes. How to prosper during a pandemic. People say, that's that's ridiculous, preacher. There ain't nobody prospering right now. I'll tell you, I can prove it in the Bible, and I'm going to tell you how to do it, prosper. Well, I uh, hope everybody's had a good, safe week. We do want to pray for people that... Um, that are sick. Uh, you know, when you get sick, you can get so sick you can't even think. Pray. So let's pray for people that are like that. There's thousands and thousands and thousands of them. Uh, the death toll, I don't know. I, I read it a while ago. Uh, it's a bunch. Uh, so let's um, let's pray. I think uh, I think we had the, uh, the death toll this morning of 13,000, something like that. I don't sound right, does it? Um, yeah, 312,000 uh, infected, 13,000 dead, and that's a lot. So uh, let's remember to pray for them. We also uh, want to say, appreciate, we have newlywed couple here this morning, Wet, Tracy, and Wet. They now had changed plans a lot, but they had their wedding yesterday. That's a wedding to remember, man. Got married in a depression. And so uh, y'all wave your hand over there. We're, we're not, we can't shake hand. We'll throw money at you. Uh, that's the nastiest thing you can touch is money. It's filthy lucre is what the Bible calls it. Uh, but uh, we're getting, Steve's get bringing us some of those ultraviolet lights that'll be on the hallways back there. Get germs off your clothes, buddy. Bang, it's like that. That's where they money, launder money, you know, clean it, cleans it up. Uh, I, I, if we, I wish we could vent something like that to take your sins away. Wouldn't that be good? But there's something better than that. It's the blood of Jesus. But boy, if we could do it with a light, light we just zap everybody when they walk in. But uh, anyway, uh, uh, we do want to pray, congratulate them folks, and uh, just enjoy the Lord today. Our Wednesday night service, uh, we're gonna we're gonna take this time, since most of you know uh, the youth rally is having to be postponed. Um, they we can't even get the fire ground. Uh, to use it. I don't have, have nowhere to even have it, even if we could by that time. So I'm not saying it's canceled. I'm saying it's postponed. Lord willing, we're going to try it, maybe shoot for the end of the summer, somewhere along there and do it. Be a little warm, but it ain't going to kill you. Uh, you'd, be, you'd be surprised if the people say, oh, I want to do that, I want to do that. How many times have I told you, you better do it while you can because the day may come when you can't. And them days are here. So uh, let's, uh, enjoy the Lord, have just a little time of fellowship, just wave at each other, everybody stand, uh, turn around there and wave or something. Go ahead.
come on right quick. Now, I'm going to have to repeat some of the announcements I made in the first service um, for you that are watching at home. Um, don't use this in, for an excuse. Um, I'll have to repeat some of the things. If you want to give, get something to write with, and I'll tell you to write down the address for you that are watching at home. I know there's people in all, all states, all over the place. There's 3,000 people watch our last Sunday morning. And um, uh, it's going to get bigger. Churches have, are, are having to be shut down in big cities and stuff. So if you like to give, and Lord knows we're like everywhere else. We can use it right now. The work's going on. The missionaries are still going to get their money. The buses are still going to be kept insured. We didn't run buses this morning, but we took cars and got actual bus kids here this morning. Isn't that a blessing? I said, if anybody wants to come, we're not going to refuse them. So we have several, several bus kids here with us today. And uh, if they want to come, we'll, we're not pressuring anybody to come. If they don't want to come, that's fine. No problem. But if they want to, we'll make a way for them to get here. All right? Um, so if you want to give, write this down, Post Office Box 177. It's easy to remember. Uh, Nebo, North Carolina. That's where Post Office Box is. P.O. Box 177, easy to remember, 177. The zip code is 28761. That's 28761. Got it? 28761. Okay? All right. So let's all give this morning, honor the Lord, and he will bless you for it. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the privilege that we have to give. We pray now, right now in Jesus' name, Holy Spirit of God, that you'd bless this offering today. Let it be what you want it to be. Meet the need. Lord, I pray people's out of work, people are uh, that are having to do without. Lord, help us to remember to honor you. Put you first and everything will work out. Help us to do it today. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> here. I know this will be a blessing to you this morning, and uh, I'm so thankful that I'm here, and I'm thankful you're here today. Be glad you're here. Say amen. 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 Thank you. Uh, uh, they, they ain't a cleaner place in town, I can tell you that. They bleached them floors back there yesterday with Clorox, and everything been completely wiped and sanitized, so just don't cough, don't sneeze. Okay. All right, y'all. Ladies ready? Go ahead. I just want to say I thank the Lord for saving me and for being so good to me. And, you know, even in this time, I can still turn around and count my blessings. And one of those blessings is, is knowing that when I die, where I'm going to go. And if you're not saved today, the only way is through, through the grace of God and through the blood shedding of his blood. Oh, it's 
God's children are leaving one by one, passing this way and going home. Signs of the time reveal we don't have very long. Each one who stands upon this shore, waving goodbye as God will leave here singing that same sweet song. I know how I made it. I know how I made it. I made it by God's amazing grace. Steps that are slower now I'm taking, each one by good saying say amen what a blessing y'all i know how i made it it's how you make it that's how you'll make it now there are more copies being made right now of last sunday morning's message on the coronavirus a step toward the mark of the beast and you can take them out this morning use them tremendous tremendous witnessing tool right now right now unbelievable you would not believe the response that uh, we've had just in the last few days. People are hungry. People are, are worried. People are scared. People are searching. Never been a better time to give them the gospel. I went uh, yesterday and uh, knocked on doors. Not one person turned down a track. Not one person refused. One guy told me not to come back, but it's because we got arguing. I, he's, I was trying to tell him, uh, he, said, he said, you ain't gonna tell me Judas is the devil. I said, I didn't say he was. I said, he's a son of perdition and his spirit will re in inhabit the body of the Antichrist. That's right. There's only two people in the Bible called son of perdition. And uh, he said, you ain't going to tell me he's the devil. I said, I didn't say he's a devil. You deaf? I'm just kidding. I didn't say. But anyway, he said, don't come back. And I said, okay. But uh, uh, let's let's uh, use, take advantage of this time. Take those CDs and use them for the Lord. Now, take your Bible this morning. Turn to Psalm 1, the first chapter of the book of Psalm. Um, we had a good spirit in here in the first service, and uh, he had, uh, I think, an or two in the altar. The Lord blessed it. Thank you all for coming to the second service. Uh, this is our schedule until you hear different. Uh, we'll have our regular meeting times, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, the evening at 6, and Wednesday at 7. There are a lot of people that would love to be here. Uh, but can't. Let's pray for them. Uh, there are a lot of people that uh, that are watching at home. Let's pray for them. Uh, one lady texted me yesterday. She said, I, I've, I've got some sickness. And I can't, I'm, I'm, my, my uh, immune system's weak, and so we can't be around people. I understand that totally, and let's pray for folks like that that have problems and burdens and stuff that hinder them, uh, and enjoy the Lord while you can. Enjoy it while you can. You hear me? Enjoy it while you can. Uh, may not always have this privilege. Psalm 1. I'm going to preach on how to prosper in a pandemic. Prosper in a pandemic. Everybody I know, unless you work in the mask, toilet paper industry or something like that, everybody I know says I'm taking a cut in salary or no salary. And, everywhere you, and everything's taking a big hit. Well, how can you get up there and tell us how to prosper? Here's how. Verse 1, Psalm 1, verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, 
nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, the Lord's law, doth he, the man, meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. You hear that? Whatever that man does will prosper. If a man will put his faith in the Lord and do right and serve God and treat people right and honor the Lord, whatever he does will prosper. Now, I'm going to tell you this morning, how prosper in a pandemic. God's people have long time, years and years and years ago, learned how to make good out of things that are bad. As I said the other day, hey, when life gives you a lemon, make lemonade. You're a child of God. When, when the world throws hard times at you, turn it into something good for the glory of God. God they, the Lord can take a crooked stick and strike straight with it. Say that ten times. Uh, the Lord can take a crooked stick and strike straight with it. That's how powerful that, I, that our God is. And instead of committing suicide and staying drunk for the next two months, or staying drunk for the next two months, uh, 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 learn how to prosper and put your faith in the Lord. Uh, I tell you, before I even start the message this morning, you know, uh, uh, the worst thing you can do is sit all day in front of the TV and watch news. That's the absolute worst thing you can do for yourself uh, uh, in this time. You turn it on once in a while, keep up with the major, they say the same thing over and over and over to drive you to the point where you're so depressed, you're ready to blow your brain out and think there's no way out. And they get ratings by telling you bad news. And there's a plenty of it to tell. But uh, keep up with what's going on. But don't sit there in front of the TV all day. Don't sit there in front of the TV all day regardless. And so uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you this morning how to prosper during this time. Number one, ready? Take time to learn the Bible. Take time. We've got time now. You've got time. Do uh, you know you can read the Bible through in 72 hours? You know, there's lots of people listening to me today that have never read the Bible through, not one time, while, while you're laid off, while, while your work's cut back, while you got more time at home, can't go nowhere else. Uh, that, that time that you would have went to the movies or you would have went to a ball game or you would have went and read the Bible. Good time to learn the Bible. Listen, you say, Brother Danny, I've been to church all my life. I know the Bible. Well, let me ask you something. If a man come up and says, uh, what do you believe about baptism? And you'd say, well, I believe it's just something good everybody ought to do. They put you down in the water and they say, well, you, you, how do you, why do you believe they have to go down in the water? There are churches, whole denominations that don't teach that. You know that, right? There are teachers that, uh, churches that teach you only sprinkled and uh, uh, with water. And there's churches that teach it like Burger King. You have it your way. Uh, you can get it either way you want it. And did you know uh, that, you know, can you take your Bible, can you take your Bible this morning and show somebody why we are baptized in water? You said, brother, I couldn't do that. Good time to learn. Good time to learn. Good time to learn. Amen. Uh, you say, I believe in baptism by immersion. You, can you prove that's not part of your salvation? There's a whole denomination, the Church of Christ. There's other preachers and teachers that teach that baptism is a part of salvation. Can you take the Bible and prove to somebody? Can you show it to them? You say, oh, it don't matter. I know what I believe. Are you sure you do? Or you believe it just because you heard a preacher say it? Have you read your Bible? Have you, can you show somebody that? You should be able to. Can you take your Bible and tell somebody why you believe in the rapture and what you believe about eschatology? Uh, that's future events, fancy word uh, for what the future. Can you take your Bible this morning and show somebody, here's why we believe in the rapture and where it will be placed? There's a big argument about that. There's a humongous splits in the body. Splits plural, in the body of Christ around the world about the, the timing and take the rapture. And uh, and uh, you say, well, the way it sounds, it's just all going to be one big event and everything. Yeah, you know, can you take your Bible and show it? 
Can you tell somebody why you believe in the second coming? Can you show somebody why you believe the second coming is literal? Can you show somebody why what you believe about the gifts of the Spirit? There's a big difference in beliefs. And some churches believe in all the gifts that the apostles had are present tense operating in churches now. And there are churches who don't. And could you say, well, say, well we, don't, we don't believe there's apostles now, do we, Brother Danny? No, we don't. There ain't none. You say, uh, why do you believe that? I can show you in the Bible. Can you show somebody in the Bible why you don't believe uh, that certain gifts are operating in people as they did in the apostles' time? Don't misquote me. Don't misquote me. God can still do anything. God still heals. God still works miracles. And God can make me speak Chinese right now. Did you hear me? God's power has never changed. His work never changed. His words never changed. But God don't always work the same way, in the same manner, with every group of people in the same dispensation. Uh, can you show somebody why you're a dispensationalist? Do you even know what a dispensation is? Uh, everybody is one. People that claim they're not dispensationalists are extremely confused or ignorant or both. If you believe in Old Testament, New Testament, you're a dispensationalist. That's right. And so can you tell somebody, good time to learn. There's plenty of stuff you can get. You can be taught right. You can be instructed right. You can. You know why you believe the King James Bible to the exclusion of the other new uh, translations in English? Can you take somebody the Bible and show them what is wrong with the NIV or the New World Translation or the Living Bible or uh, the Living Word, the Written Word, or the next word and the word after that? Uh, can you take your Bible and show them why you believe it? You say, Brother Danny, I can't. Good time to learn. Good time to learn. You're home. Good time to teach it to your kids. You know what the Old Testament? The Lord said, put it on your doorstep. Put it on above your doors. Put up, You put scripture verses up. Instead of sports heroes, put up some scripture verses in your sign. Say, listen, kids, we're going to learn the Bible. Uh, Ethan and Molly have been uh, west on those Christian DVDs and they've been learning about the, the Lord coming back in the tribulation. They've been watching a Christian DVD. Good time. They're out of school. They can do all their schoolwork in two hours, uh, I reckon, and, uh, and and they got the rest of the day uh, to, to learn. Learn the Bible. Learn. Uh, can you tell what the Bible says about clothes? Can you tell what the Bible says about marriage? Can you tell what the Bible takes us about divorce? Can you tell what the Bible says about uh, working? Can you tell what the Bible says about raising, raising children? Listen, people, good time to learn the Bible. It is not time to lay around on your phone hours and hours and hours a day and reading gossip and, and reading stuff, this, this conspiracy theory about why the virus is here. And it, it might be, who knows. Uh, but uh, one thing about it, it ain't going to do you a bit of good to read a bunch of junk that you don't even know is true when you got a whole book of stuff you know is true. And you want, you know, somebody asked me, they said, Brother Danny, how do you stay upbeat? I stay upbeat by looking up instead of around. I stay up me by looking to the Lord instead of what's going on around me. This world ain't our home no way. We got our treasures laid up behind the blue. Glory to God, brother, we got a hope in front of us. Amen. Take time to learn the Bible. Teach your kids the Bible. Sit around and say, we're going to learn Bible verse. I already learned the Bible verse the other day. It was um, Proverbs 4.18. Is that it, Marty? Uh, For the path of justice as what? Uh, that what? Amen. You got that? She learned that. If it hadn't been for the virus, she would have never known that verse. <laughs> so that's Romans 8, 28. Uh, teach your kids the Bible. Set them down. For heaven's sake, don't say, all right, kids, you go in your room and watch Netflix, and we're going to stay in here and watch Worse flicks, and 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 you stay in there, and we're staying in here, and stay on your phone. The the absolute worst thing you can do during this time is sit around and watch movies all week. And you say well, that makes me mad. I hope you you ain't got no more sense than that. Uh, and you're so wicked and so backslid. Good time to get backslid. You know, you get backslid and lazy, and you won't be fit to shoot. Time is over with if all you do is lay around and watch TV. Say, man, preacher. I'm telling you right now, take time to learn the Bible. Number two, number two, listen to this. You want to prosper? Find new ways to get the gospel out. Find new ways to get the gospel out. There's always a way. We got track rack back here on the back. Them th her in here has been sanitized. They've wiped them doors down again back here while I've been up here preaching. 
So they'll be perfectly sanitized when you walk out of here. Get you a handful of tracks. If you're, if you're still working, take them to work. If you're too chicken to give them to somebody, grown man, too chicken to give out a track, uh, you can lay them around where people can find them. I, lay, I took these DVDs. This is the bus ministry here. This is Daughters of Calvary here. That's a good one. Uh, he's making CDs of last Sunday's message. I had some in my pocket. Went to the grocery store last night. And I went to the grocery store. It's weird in there because everybody was grinding stuff off the shelves that somebody had put on there a few hours earlier and touched. And uh, and they were serving food out of their little, little restaurant place there, serving people food. What about them people? Uh, we don't touch in here. And they were serving food. They was, uh, they was grabbing them bags, touching that filthy money, handing it back to people. And I said, well, Lord, protect me. That's all I know to do. Uh, you got to go to the store. And, uh, and, and I, I said... Uh, I told that lady to check me out. I said, uh, she was checking out my stuff. And I said, lady, you want to know what the Bible says about the coronavirus? She said, yes. And I just pulled out the CD, handed it to her, said, there you go. She said, thank you so much. And the boy that put the stuff in the bag said the same thing. Listen, people's hungry, y'all. People's hungry. People are scared. People are wanting the truth. They want to know what's going on. You'd be hard-pressed to find anybody around here that ain't going to say, I would like to know what the Bible says about plagues. I would like to know. And last Sunday, he's making a stack of them right now. Find new ways to get the gospel out. Take some CDs. Uh, people were eager yesterday. I, I, I don't know what the older came to the door. Bless her heart. And I, I said, ma'am, I'm going to give you something to read. And Jesus is your friend. She said, thank you. Thank you. She can barely walk. It's a hundred feet. You know how hot it was yesterday? Heat come out of that house. Hit me in the face. Lord have mercy. People's hungry everywhere. Uh, we can make some signs. I've, I'm, I'm praying about right now. Getting my sign man, Willie. Make some of these like this, except say something a little different. Something to relate to the, the situation. I mean, y'all take one of these and put them up on a uh, It's going to say a little something different than this. And this is great. And that's the main message. But uh, I've got a few things in mind. We'll put up some signs, glory to God. Amen. Put up some banners. We ain't getting to put up a youth rally banners all over. We could just put up some other banners that have a nice, friendly message uh, to share the love of Jesus with the community. Amen. Find new ways to put out the gospel. Brother, we're not going under. We're not going under. I mean, we're not, the church ain't dying. Lord, we, we ain't even started fighting yet. I mean, we're God's church. We're, we'll fight till hell freezes over and the long as the Lord gives us breath. Amen. That's right. That's right. Uh, find new ways of getting the gospel out. My cousin up in West Virginia, they have about a hundred and something coal trucks uh, uh, running coal business and uh, that's all they are up there. You, they ain't but two places to work, selling drugs or, or working coal mine. And uh, uh, if you want a legal job, you sell working coal mine or in a, a truck truck or something. And uh, or in the pharmaceutical industry is big there right now. And uh, uh, they, he has 100 coal trucks. And when the coal, when the last president and the administration and the environmental people try to shut the coal mines down uh, and call it, make an excuse to, to break the country and use the environment for an excuse. That's eventually what a lot of this is about. But I'm not saying this. Don't get crazy on me. Uh, but anyway, when, an, when a disaster would happen, like a hurricane in Florida, he'd send a bunch of his guys and trucks down there to haul off stuff. So you know what he done? He didn't just sit at home and say, oh, well, we're going under. No. What he said was, this is wrong here, so let's do something over here. So if we can't have 400 people in here, let's take 100 at a time. Don't just lay down and die. Don't just say, we're giving up. If we can't run buses with people sitting close to each other, we'll do like we did yesterday. What we're doing in our bus ministry, we're not leaving our bus kids alone. We're staying in touch with them. We're going to knock on the door. Hope everything's going good. We love you. Here's a CD to listen to. Here's a DVD to watch. We'll see you next. And keep that relationship and that touch with our bus kids as long as we can by the grace of God. Social distances, no overloading, no buses. They brought some in cars this morning. So there's, 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 the old saying is there's more than one way to skin a cat. And we're going to try to be uh, innovative, you know, uh, 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 figure out new ways. Uh, so
Like that little boy I told about a while ago, he had sand sanitizers, giving it, selling it for a dollar a squirt. Uh, and, and he's a kid at school, and he got in trouble for that. But Lord, that's a smart little feller. That's, that's the kind you want in the bus ministry. You say, I'm not going to let my bus kids go. Text them. Tell them. Tell them how to get on the internet and watch our services. Stay in touch with them. Go by and go by and say, you don't have to go in. You don't have to touch them. You don't have to go in their house. Let's go by. Listen, brother, listen. Uh, if you know of an elderly person, you know, they're saying that elderly people are way, way, way higher risk group of, of, of 55, 60, 65, especially people in their 60s are in a higher risk group to contract uh, this this virus. See, if you know an older person, have you thought about this? I'm talking about new ways to get the gospel out. Do you know an elderly person? I tell you what you do. Go by and see them and say, hey, listen, I know you might not get out. I've got a neighbor, two of them actually, that I'm going to plan on doing that this week. And I'm going to say, hey, uh, if you're afraid to go get your groceries, if you'll make me a list, I'll go get them for you and bring them back here and then bring them, take them to them. And then witness to them. Give them a gospel track. Give them one of the CDs. Give them a DVD of the services. Do you know that's a tremendous way to, to witness? I mean, if you're able, you might even want to buy people. There's, there's people in our bus families that don't have a lot of food to eat. And this $1,200 ain't going to be here for a while. Uh, I mean, you, you start death time. That gets here probably. Uh, it might be a few weeks. But, uh, you know, some uh, take, take it to an older person and say, say, I want to help you. I want to help you. You don't, I'll take your mail to the post office or I'll go to the bank and deposit your check or I'll, I'll do something like that. You say, well, brother Danny, I just don't you think. Use your head, man. You say, I don't know no old people. Me. I'm old. Go buy me some groceries in this time of famine. I'll take it. Hallelujah. I, I, I can't get out of the house. Uh, uh, I thought that's so that's the weirdest thing I've ever heard in my life. People said, You're too old to go to church, you can't go nowhere. I said, wait a minute here now. That's I'm a, that's a new crime. It's called senior phobia. Yeah. Fear of old people. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a hate crime soon, and we'll put you in jail if you treat us any different than you do normal people. Help an old person yeah. like me. Listen, there are people that all they are talking about is movies, 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 movies. I'm going to stay in and watch movies. I'm going to stay in and watch movies. You're going to get dumber and heavier. You know you're supposed to change your diet when you ain't working as hard, don't you? You can't keep piling it in like, like you was when you was working hard. Lord, I ain't hear one amen on that right there. Amen. Don't just lay down and get lazy. You know, they, they shut the gym on us. I can't go in there and run. Of course, I've still been running e every day, but I, I'm out of shape, honest to goodness. Uh, me and Ethan played one-on-one -on -one yesterday and because uh, I'm not running hard. It don't take but a few days of not working. You ain't going to be fit to shoot when it's, if you ever do get to work again. You better make yourself very, I don't know what to tell you. I know what I'm going to do. By the Lord, we're going to run in the rain tomorrow morning, Lord willing. But you better do something. You better do something. Cut the gospel out. You better put the gospel out. You better put the gospel out. Just lay around. Listen, you say, Brother Danny, I'm off work and all I got to do is lay around and watch movies. That's the idea. We've got tons of work around here to do. Somebody needs to come and clean all these buses while they're parked. Just come clean them. Get you a pressure washer or some soap and water and wash them out and just shove it out the back door. Clean these buses. Disinfect them. I mean, they're not going to be used for a while maybe. But hallelujah, brother, clean the buses. Cut the weeds around here. Cut the weeds. Cut the weeds, not cut weed. All right, we don't have none of that growing here that I know of. That I know of. Uh, they may be a stash up there in the mountain some of these guys got. Uh, but uh, I, I don't think so. But anyway, uh, cut the weeds. Come here to church cut the weeds. Do some painting. All the restrooms around the hallway. Uh, that can be painted. Do anything that's upset around. Find a way to do something for God. Find a way to do something for God. Amen. I'm disappointed in Christian people. That all they want to do is lay around and watch TV. That proves that's what you want to do all along, I reckon. Number three, you know how to prosper in a pandemic? Save some money. You're going to need it. 
save some money. I said in the first service, I'll have to repeat a couple things. They are proposing now a $2 trillion bailout for the country. The entire budget of the United States is only $5 trillion. Think about that. Two weeks, $2 trillion in the hole. The stock market went down $12 trillion in the last few days. The highest it's ever been in history was February 19th. Good times were rolling. I'm going to say something more about that tonight. Give you just a little preview. Tonight I'm going to preach on praying in a pandemic. And let me tell you something, people. I stood right there. I remember where I was standing, right there a few weeks ago. And in the message, I said, listen, we're, uh, everybody's talking about good times, good times. The economy's never been better. Money's never been better. We got money. We're planning out all kinds of vacations this summer. The good times are here to stay. And I remember saying, listen, if we don't get right with God, the Lord can take it all away. Our country's putting their approval on sin. We had a man running for president that was an avowed homosexual married to another man and not one politician or news anchor condemned it. Not one. And I remember thinking, oh boy, oh boy. I, if a man shacking up, he'd run for office if he's, if he's living in any kind of sin. You know, I remember saying, oh boy. Y'all remember me saying, I was standing right there. And I said, we, you can't do this. You cannot do this. And everybody thought, nothing can stop us now. The Lord can take something so little you can't even see it. And bring the whole blessed world down. You say, you believe it's the judgment of God? Yes. Can't prove it, but I do. A lot more proof it is than you got proof it ain't. Either way, he allowed it. He allowed it. Listen, you can't live against God's word like our country has and spit in the face of God and loaf her on Sunday and not even go to church and, and, lay, and not even read the Bible and expect God to keep blessing our country. I'll talk more about that tonight. Listen, save some money. I saw people carrying out beer and wine yesterday. One guy in front of me had a bottle of wine that high and I could already smell it on him. And that's what a lot of people are going to do. Get in their apartments, have a few friends over and get drunk and stay drunk. And say the government's going to pay for it. You know where a lot of that $1,200 is going to wind up? Drug dealers. Yep. Now's a change. You don't have to work. We can get high and stay high. Amen. I remember my daddy. Daddy said this. He said, if you want to save money, work a second shift. And I've worked all three. I've worked third shift. I'm, I'm, I know what third shift's like. It's, I, I know what I work second shift, and he's right. You know why? Because when you work third shift, you come home at 1130 at night, and then you eat a bowl of cereal or something, stay up till 12, 1 o'clock, then you sleep late, and ain't but about three hours out of time to go back to work. And if you, you don't have time to get out and loafer and spend your money. What he's saying was, if you stay home, you don't spend money. Now, I bet some of you have already noticed a big difference well, you thought you had to eat out at least three times a week. And now you got $150 in your pocket that you wouldn't have had a couple of weeks ago. You say, well, I will get to carry out. Well, I'll talk more about that in a minute. But learn to save some money. Learn to save some money. Think of the stuff you can really do without if you want to. I heard, I heard him talking about, uh, this, this is kind of funny, but it's true. You think about all the stuff that it's in shortage. Uh, you can't maybe go get your nails done. I went and got a haircut yesterday. And I mean, you I mean, what are you going to do? Stay six foot away? So reach over here and cut it with the scissors? I mean, I, I ain't going to cut it myself. It'd look worse than it does. What? Do my nails over there. Throw my change at me. Uh, you know, put it in this little, hit it in this basket right here. I mean, what are you going to do? Think of the stuff you can do without. One lady said, I don't know what I'm going to do. I can't get my makeup. I can't get my makeup. I can't. Get my... We might be fixing to find out what y'all really look like here in the now. Oh, Lord. Lord, please don't do that to us. Supply the makeup store. Supply the hairspray. Supply the dye in the false teeth place or whatever. God, don't let it come to that. You talk about it looks like a bunch of blessed zombies. The walking dead or something or another. Listen, think of the stuff you can, you can do without. What about that one guy?
his wife died, and he got to cleaning out all her stuff, and about found him enough stuff to make him a nothing. But, but anyway, save some money. Save some money. Think of the money that that five thousand dollar vacation you was going to take at spring break. Put it in the bank or a safer place. That that where you was going to go to Dollywood and blow a thousand dollars for a weekend or week, and you can do it with a big family. Save that money. Learn how to save some money. Stay in. All the gas you save, the miles on your car, the restaurants you don't have to go to, motels, malls. Save that money. Stay home. And then lastly, and I'm through, number four, you know how to prosper in a pandemic? I said, take time to learn the Bible. Find new ways to get the gospel out. Save some money. Number four, be thankful for what you have. Family time. Family time. Since the kids are home, I've seen people on TV. I was watching some part of the news and they had a panel on there. What are we going to do? They're calling in psychiatrists and psychologists to teach people how to cope with their kids being home. That's how stupid our generation is. You know, you know what you do? You're doing what people did for thousands of years that raised kids and had them out in the country 24 hours a day till they was grown married. I don't know. They said, I don't know what I'm going to do. You got to get these kids out of here. They're driving me crazy. One man said, please don't send them home. Please listen. And in all seriousness, I know that's funny, but did you know that during this time, domestic violence is going to skyrocket? You can count it down, uh, mark it down. You part, you, uh, up in New York where people are locked in, can't go nowhere. Listen, you think you've got it bad? You think we're having it hard? There's thousands probably a million, 40 million in the state of California, all the millions of people in New York, in New York City, there, listen to me, ladies, there are ladies in an apartment, not much bigger than half, 200 square feet. It's 10 by 20, by the biggest from here to that wall right there. The whole apartment on the 10th floor. Family there, family there, family there, family there, family there. And snow outside. And a mom and five kids in there, 12, 13, cussing and throwing stuff and fighting. And daddy drunk. Right now. You think you got it bad? I mean, they're telling them. They can't go nowhere. The governor in New York told them they can't even play basketball. There's where he's crossed the line, bless God. I'm just kidding. He said, you can't play basketball and practice social distance. No, you can't. So don't worry about it. But... Social distance. Uh, I said, they're in there in apartments right now. It ain't going to be long. Rape, child molestation, violence toward women, men, drunkenness is absolute. You cook people up. Listen, people that have an old nature and not saved, and you cook them up in, a, in an apartment for weeks and weeks and weeks, something's going to blow sky high, people. You can't do that. People be, like, be like animals. They'll be roaming the streets with guns before it's over with. Appreciate your family time. Appreciate your family time. Kids at home. Miss B's over last night. I made milkshakes. I made milkshakes for Marty. Made milkshake for Ethan. Miss Kelly and Miss B had to do for themselves. But I made them a milkshake. Well, that fell up with chocolate ice cream, pour milk in it, and fix it all up. Man, I'm telling you, make your tongue slap your brains out. And, and but I and I had I had Pepsi in mine. I had vanilla ice cream and Pepsi. Amen. Hallelujah. And boy, we they we had a good time in the Lord. In Italy yesterday, there was 800 people died with the coronavirus. 800. And Italy ain't a big place. It ain't like the United States. You better count your blessings. You better count your blessings. God help you if you live in a home where there's one old grouch that ruins it for everybody. Do not bow your head. I'll tell you when to do that. Usually and there's one grouch that keeps everybody upset and mad and fussing and just ruins the whole day for everybody. It'd be a good time to get along. If you can't get along, just don't talk at all. Don't be hollering and screaming in front of the kids. 
you little brat. Well, I'm mad. I'm, everything I've got so I'm losing it. I don't know that. Well, it might be time to get right with God and appreciate some time with your family. Plant a garden, brother. Learn how to, you say, I ain't got, you got a little bit of dirt. I'll loan you some. You, you, if you live in an apartment where it's all concrete, you can put a box, put you some tomato plants in it, and put it there at the door and grow some tomatoes. Kids need to see stuff like that. Let, 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 them, let them know that you don't pick biscuits off a biscuit bush. Let, I mean, most of these kids, these kids now, they don't even know that, you, that potatoes grow up. And you got to dig down the ground to get the potatoes out of the ground. They don't even know that. You say, where's potatoes come from? They say, Walmart. They honestly think that. They just got a machine somewhere that makes them. Plant a garden. Uh, Brother Derek mentioned the other night, said, uh, we was talking about this, and he said, uh, at, the, at the stores, the bread was gone, milk was gone, everything, but the seed, the, the seed was completely full. Be a good time to learn. May need it for it's over with. Learn how to grow some potato. Learn how to grow some corn. Daddy taught me when we he'd roll a little old row like that with a with a with a he had a mule, buddy, when I was a little kid, and pulled it and make a row. And he'd say, Now drop two or three here, a little bit, drop two or three there. Because one out of them two or three is gonna come up. And a corn stalk comes up, and then you get uh, out of one little grain of corn, you get eight or ten nice full ears of corn. Kids don't even know that. Go, wouldn't that be a fun thing for you to do with all this time instead of sitting around fussing? Go get you something. Uh, go over here to Supply Place, uh, at uh, one of these places that sell stuff like that. Get you some seed, plant plant some, some in, in the soil and water it and watch it grow. Play some games. That's a good idea. Learn how to cook. Learn how to cook. I know people will starve if they don't learn quick. If they ain't cooked a meal, or they little girls get married now and can't boil water without ruining it. Learn how to cook, brother. Learn how to cook. Amen. Get you a recipe book. Learn how to fix spaghetti. Learn how to fix. Dollar stores got plenty of meat. Yesterday, I went last night. They got plenty. Of, I, they're behind this whole thing. No, I'm just kidding. I don't mean that. The dollar store is a good place. Thank God for them. Learn how to make a pot roast. Fry some bacon. Liver mush. Remember the elderly. Listen. There's people so dumb nowadays, they don't know. They really don't know that you can cook stuff a sub sandwich or something at home. Like that girl the other day, they said, this girl, they said, uh, what's fat back? And she said, an overweight football player. <laughs> That's sad, isn't it? How about spending some time? You got plenty to do if you ain't too lazy to do it. Learn your Bible. Me and Frankie, uh, Marty, took a walk up in the woods. And I got, we got... Lord, we got 27 acres and got a fish pond and got basketball goal and four-wheeler and everything else. They, they, can, they can stay there all the time and have more fun than a lot of kids have in their whole life, just playing out in the yard. And we walked around up in the woods, walked around up in the woods, and every time we come to a big big log, we'd both just pull him over it like that. Boy, he loved it. Take some time. To spend some time with your family. That's how to prosper in a pandemic. We don't know how bad this is going to get. Y'all come on. We don't know. We may be on the edge of a depression, people. Like it was in 1929. I don't know. I hope not. Don't say I prophesied it. We don't know what we may be facing. But I'd like to tell you, prosper in a pandemic. You do these things that I told you this morning. No matter what happens in the world, even if you get sick or I get sick, and I might, and you might, no matter how many precautions you take, you don't know. And if you don't get that, something else is going to get you pretty soon. So learn how to trust God and live for Him. He'll bless you for it. Let's stand by our heads for prayer. We're going to pray and then we'll sing. If you want to feel the need to come and pray, you, you feel fine. Just keep our distance up here at the altar. There's a big crowd in here. There's a lot of people in here this morning. So you can pray there at your seat if you'd like to. Let's, let's do that right now. Heavenly Father, I sure do thank you.
for being able to come to church once again. Lord, help us not to take this for granted. Lord, this may be the last time we ever get together like this. We don't know. But God, if it is, help us to make sure we're right in our heart. And Lord, we ask you to keep the doors open to Shining Light Baptist Church. Have your way in our hearts this morning. Help us to live for you and serve you during these dark days. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Make sure his mic's on. Some's already come. If you need to come, plenty of room. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. I come. Everything right? Everything right? Good time to get right with the Lord. I preached in the first service on no shortages. No shortages like milk, bread. There's no shortage of God's forgiveness. Plenty of it here for you. I've done I've done preach twice today. Got another message planned for tonight. Uh, somebody asked me two or three people said, "How in the world do you keep your thoughts straight?" But we you heard you heard them running together a little bit there. I guess did. some of them thoughts blending together. But you just I don't know separate your mind. I guess like, like you're preaching camp meeting. But I got something else tonight, praying in a pandemic. So go home, get you some rest, pray with your family, and I'll come back tonight at 6. Now, all right, turn that thing off. I'll talk just a second, we'll go. Yes, the other day I said that.